Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Come on, let's come up with something. What was the idea you had at lunch, buddy? You mean about us getting a jelly donut and splitting three ways? <laughs> no, the idea you had for the big middle sketch. Well, that was his idea. We do a sketch about three bums trying to split up a jelly donut without anybody getting a dry piece. <laughs> Was that my idea? I thought it was Rob's. Well, what difference whose idea it was? Is it any good? I think it's great. For one thing, it'll help us service Alan and the two guest stars. And I think Alan can be very funny tapping the donut like a doctor looking for the jelly pot. <laughs> yeah, hey, or else you could get a Geiger counter, you know, and it only counts the Geigers in jelly. <laughs> Fellas, I can't, I can't do a sketch about a jelly donut. Why not? Because I just had spaghetti and I'm full. So get yourself an Italian stomach pump. <laughs> what do you say? Let's pile into the monologue, please. I will do the monologue tonight after dinner. Why don't you and Pickles were having guests tonight? Ah, no guests, just my mother-in-law and her sister. Well, what do you consider them? Invaders. <laughs> All right, then, you, you do the monologue at home tonight, okay? Hey, you're going to give me a chance to run the den, get away from the locusts. <laughs> Telephone's ringing, Rob. Grab the phone. Oh, thank you. Hello? Oh, hi, Mel. Who? Why? What? Oh, the next one's got to be when. Where? Now comes when. When? <laughs> well, my, my, my first thought would be to say no to the... Well, look, will you let me think it over? Well, yeah, but how about in the morning? I'll give you an answer. Yeah, I know that, Mel. All right. Yeah, bye. Oh, where were we? What old sex pot one? Oh, <laughs> nothing. It's just, uh, just a little annoyance. Well, we got plenty of annoyances. We got three sketches and a monologue. Yeah, and I got a hole in my sock. Look at that. All right, let's get some work done before you spring one in your head. <laughs> hey, Rob, you on the level about that jelly donut bit? Are you on a level about it? Yes, I'm on a level about it. What do you think? Oh, I'm, yeah, sure, let's, yeah, let's, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Nineteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one books, and they're all filled. Well? <laughs> Yeah, I'm fine, except for the fact that my tongue stuck to my teeth. I'm fine. Why did you use the sponge I gave you? Where? Well, I gave you one, Rob. You glued it to the book. <laughs> well, what do you want to get with the stamps? Well, I don't know. How many books you got? Twenty-one. Well, let's see. Two more books, and you can trade it in for the catalog. Oh. <laughs> Millie had a kind of an original idea. She's going to use her stamps to pay for one of the walls in the playroom. Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's just fine, but they're going to live in constant fear that somebody breaks in and steals the whole wall. <laughs> well, for 32 books, they can get a watchdog. Now, what's on your mind? Now, how did you know something was on my mind? Because all through dinner, your forehead was all wrinkled, and you kept going, hey. Uh, <laughs> hey. See, you did it again. Yeah. Well, Mel called me this morning with something, a problem that had to do with Buddy and Sally and me, and I made a decision without consulting him. You do that all the time, don't you? Uh, yeah, but this is a little bit different. Manhattan Magazine wants to do a big article on the Alan Brady Show, and they want to send a reporter in to sit in and watch us write. And? Well, I just wonder if I was right in making a decision on that without consulting Buddy and Sally. Well, I certainly think it would be all right. Yeah, I, that's what I, I felt about it. After all, I'm the head writer. I'm responsible for what goes on in that writing room. That's true, but I don't see why you can't discuss it with them. Well, I was scared to death they had talked me into letting a reporter come in there. Oh, and you don't want that? Of course not. Why? Do you know what would happen if a reporter from a famous magazine came in our office? <laughs> Why would it be that, what you said? <laughs> Honey, with a stranger in the room, everybody gets very self-conscious and they begin to show off. Including you? Yeah, I'm human. Oh, Rob, that's silly. You've been interviewed before. You've had a situation like this before. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just avoid the pratfalls. That's pitfalls. <laughs> no, you see, you know the words. 
and just avoid them. No, honey, if I let a reporter in there, everybody's gonna start showing off. We'll never get any work done. We'll make big fools out of ourselves. Well, I guess you know best. I'm sure I do. Of course, one thing, though. What? Well, you really shouldn't be discussing this with me. You should talk it over with Buddy and Sally. I mean, this publicity concerns all three of you, and they might be upset if you left them out. Oh, I don't think they would. Well, who knows? They might want the publicity. I mean, after all, everybody reads Manhattan Magazine, and they might think it's a good idea for people to know who writes The Alan Brady Show. They might think? All right, I think they might. And why not, Rob? I happen to be proud of you and what you do for that show. Is there anything wrong in a woman wanting her man to become famous and well-known? No, no. Look what the lady in red did for John Dillinger. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'll shut up. Last week, Rob, in the beauty parlor, I read an article in a magazine about the writers of the Kevin Darby show and how they are responsible for its success. Well, honey, you hate that show. I know. And it just galled me to think that they get all that credit for writing a rotten show and you don't get any credit for writing a good one. Honey, I get a lot of credit. I get paid a lot of money. And I have a wife who gives me very nice compliments about it, and we almost got an award once. Well, who knows? Maybe with a little publicity, you may get an award, too, like the Kevin Darby show. The Kevin Darby show didn't get an award. They didn't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, but they got all that publicity. See? See what? You don't get credit or publicity, so if you got a little of each, you might get a lot more of both. <laughs> you know something? What? You're no fun to talk to. All anymore. right. <laughs> One end up, another Dwight Heatherton. Go ahead. Who's that? Dwight Heatherton happens to be an excellent writer who is unknown because he gets no publicity. Well, how do you know him? Oh, Robbie's famous. <laughs> All right, you want me to discuss this whole thing with Buddy and Sally, huh? Yes. Because you think they may outvote me, don't you? Well, for your sake, I hope they do. All right. But uh, if they get a reporter in that office, you had better cancel Saturday night's dinner party. With Buddy and Sally? That's right. Why? Because by Saturday night, the three of us will not be talking to each other. Oh. Gee, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Buddy? I don't know. What do you think? I just said I didn't know. What do you think, Rob? I told you what I think. Let's forget the whole thing. Okay. I'll go along with that. Okay. Me too. You're perfectly right. Good. Hey. Maybe we ought to think about it some more. Yeah. Don't you think we ought to just... Oh, now, come on. You both just said you'd go along with me. Yeah, I know, Rob, but look, we're all partners. I have to agree with him, too. Hey, Rob, tell me why you don't want us to have our name in a big national magazine so we'll be famous and people give us free tickets to the movies we'll be able to get better seats in restaurants and regular people and our relatives will give us a lot of respect. Tell me again why you don't want that. <laughs> Buddy, it's very simple. You see, if the three of us... Yeah, Rob, why don't we want that? Because if we let a stranger in here, we're not going to be able to act like ourselves. We'll be trying to impress the reporter, and we won't get any work done. That's why. Well, I'm not so sure, Rob. We're all professionals. I mean, I don't think it would upset me if someone were in the room. Me neither. You know me, boy. When I got work to do, I do it. Comedy is a serious business, and I've been in it long enough to give it plenty of respect and dignity. <laughs> That's just what I mean. We wouldn't feel free to do that kind of stuff. No, we'll never get a show written, either. Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, we'll all be performing for the reporter. We won't get a show done. Oh, not me. Not you. Do you guys remember just a few years ago, we brought a tape recorder in here so we wouldn't have to take any notes, you know? You did 84 choruses of all of me. Oh. <laughs> He's right, Sal. Well, you, you brought in your cello and we had four hours of yucca puck. Yeah. <laughs> And besides, next to America the Beautiful, Yucca Puck happens to be one of the most beloved songs in this country. Oh. <laughs> Rob, listen, that tape recorder incident was a couple of years ago. Hey, yeah, maybe we ought to give this Manhattan magazine a whirl, huh? Are you serious? What? The worst can happen. They give us a free subscription. Sal? <laughs> well, I think if we're all aware of what can happen, I, I think we can control ourselves. Sure, everything will go smoothly. Rob. Speaking of smoothly, here's old Levelhead. <laughs> Will you please tell Chicken Little he's wanted in the hen house? Chicken Little, hey, he's sharp. This guy got a, a trigger brain, but I think the gun jammed. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Rob, have you thought any further about the discussion we had last night? Oh, well, it's against my better judgment, Mel, but I guess the majority rules, so tell Manhattan Magazine to go ahead. Fine, I'll give them a call and tell them it's okay. Uh, well, what time will I be here? First... <laughs> The exhaust pipe on the inside. Hey, they're gonna be here first thing in the morning. I gotta get home early tonight. Why? Well, I gotta get my nails manicured, my hair curled, and my nose tilted just a touch. You see, you see that? Oh, come on, Rob. I'm only kidding. I'll be my regular self tomorrow. Yeah, me too. All I gotta do is have a suit pressed and have my overall height lengthened. That's it. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna have my head examined. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hi, honey. No, the reporter isn't here yet. No, I'm, I'm really not very worried about it. I just made up my mind, a magazine or no magazine, this is going to be just another ordinary working day. We'll just... Hello, darling. <laughs> honey, I'll have to call you back. No, Auntie Mame just popped in. <laughs> I'll explain it a little later. Goodbye. There's nobody here yet. Oh, the coffee come yet? <laughs> Look, I thought we weren't going to fuss for the reporter. Fuss? Who fussed? Oh, of course not. Good heavens. You always dress for a coronation in the morning, don't you? Oh, that dress. Oh, this old thing. That old thing, uh huh? You know, next to you, the Duchess of Windsor dresses like Huckleberry Finn. I thought we were just going to be ourselves today. Come on, Rob. There's nothing wrong with dressing nice for an interview, is there? Oh, I know I never should have agreed to this. How's it going to look? You dressed up like Madame de Berry and Buddy and me just an ordinary street club. <laughs> well, well, well. Come in, Prince Philip. Robin, good morning. Sally, my dear. Nobody's here yet. Hey, Marge, cancel the tea. Bagel and coffee. <laughs> Welcome home, Admiral. Well, 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 well. This is quite an outfit we have on. You mean this little schmutter? <laughs> <laughs> this little schmutter. You know something? You and Sally have the greatest old clothes in the whole world. You guys certainly started this thing off great. Oh. Uh, we were just kidding you, Rob. You know what this nut wanted me to do? He wanted me to come in wearing a diamond tiara. <laughs> I was going to wear knickers and a cape, but they told me you were wearing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very, very funny. Well, I hope that this right now is as far as the joke goes. Look, if it'll make you feel any better, under all this glamour, I'm wearing torn underwear. <laughs> hey, that's the reporter. All right, you guys, remember the rules. This is just another ordinary working day okay, like okay. nobody was here. Okay, okay. okay. Come okay. in. Hello, I'm Noreen Gilman. You're expecting me? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> How do you do? I am Maurice B. Sorrell. But you can call me Buddy. And I'm uh, Robert Petrie. And how do you do? I'm Sally Rogers. Hello, <laughs> Sally. Well, it's very nice to meet all of you. I uh, hope I'm not disturbing you. I won't stay too long. Stay just as long as your little old heart desires. Well, we're, we're very happy to have you here, Miss Gilman. Lorraine. Oh, yes. You, uh, you sit down, Miss uh, Gilman? Lorraine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this way. You're, um, you're positive I won't be in the way, Mr. Petrie. No, oh, not at all. And none of that Mr. Petrie stuff. You call me Lorraine. Make yourself clear. <laughs> <fun. laughs> Cooley asked me to drop by and take a few notes, sort of get the feel of the room, you know. All right, well, if you have any questions later, you just ask me. Oh, yes, Mr. Cooley said you were the head writer. Oh, well, we don't uh, do much with titles or Oh, yeah, here. that's right. We're all equal here. <laughs> no head writer in this room. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I... Well, it's none of that boss stuff around here. That's really very democratic. Yeah. Can we uh, start to work now? Yeah, I think it'd be a very good idea that we get right down to work. Let's see now. What were we working on? Uh, the sketch. That's right. My sketch about the uh, three bums and the jelly donut. You mean the sketch about the three bums and the jelly donut? What did I say? You said my sketch. Listen, I've been thinking about that sketch. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a riot. But... Well, I don't know. It's an awful lot like one we did about two weeks ago. Why didn't you say something about it yesterday? Well, I didn't think of it until I was driving in this morning. Oh, well, what matter? I'll think of something else. Well, don't worry, dear. You won't think alone. We'll help you. Good, good. Uh, this week, I think I'll open with Alan doing a monologue. Right at the beginning there. Buddy, hey, Alan's been opening with a monologue for five years now. You're telling me? It was my idea. The monologue. Alan comes out. Let's see. He says, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad you're all here to help me celebrate this week three years of happy married life. 
Three out of twelve, not bad, huh? <laughs> and then he says, hey, marriage is wonderful. Do you know what it means to come home with a beautiful, sexy wife waiting at the door who grabs you and kisses, kisses you passionately? Do you know what that means? It means you're in the wrong house. That's what it means. <laughs> uh, buddy, we wrote that monologue for Alan last week. I know. I just thought I'd get things rolling. Oh, get things rolling. <laughs> Forgive me, but those are very funny jokes. Oh, do you really think so? Oh, I think they're hysterical. Well, thank you. <laughs> what do you mean, thank you? <laughs> well, I did contribute a couple of comments, you know. <laughs> How about this? Say that Alan and his wife have been invited to a costume party, but when they arrive, they find out they're a week early. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like well, that. Well, thank you very much. For what? For suggesting my costume sketch. Your costume sketch. Yeah, I did it three years ago for Milton Berle. <clears throat> All right, look, why don't we just do an out and out slapstick sketch? Alan loves to do those. Well, I'm for that. All right. Let's say that Alan has a beef with his wife. Suppose. Oh, again with the husband and wife. You keep pushing them. Why not? They're funny. Well, all righty. Now, come up with the funny ones. <laughs> all right. So, uh, well, let's say that uh, Alan, uh, his wife's gone for the weekend. Oh, no. So, well, now, wait a minute. I'm building to something here. His wife's gone, and he has, he has to uh, cook for himself. He has to make his own dinner. And, um, well, he could, a lot of funny things could happen. You know, goofy things are goofing up in the kitchen. Yeah, pretty hilarious. Yeah, well, no, wait a minute, no. Uh, he has, say, he can shock himself on an electric can opener. You know, a guy would do something like that. That'd be yeah. funny. And then uh, uh, he, he could put too much rice in a, in, boi in a boiling water, you know, it would overflow all over the stove. You know, that's always good. That kind of slapstick. You know. And he could. Uh, but what if he put the dishes in the clothes washer instead? You know, or maybe he could put clothes in the dishwasher. That'd even be funnier. And the whole, you know, you get a mess. Of, you know, I was talking to Noel Coward at that party. Uh, <laughs> the messy situation. Uh, it, it could be funny, but don't you think it's kind of old hat? Well, as, as writers, it's up to us to put a new band on an old, old uh, hat. Well, what are we, joke writers or milliners? <laughs> what do you want to do, do a whole hour on one-liners and monologues and stuff? Well, it's better than a husband and wife screaming at each other. All right, all right, we'll forget the husband and wife thing. We'll do something completely different. We'll do something daring. Something daring, huh? Maybe like that uh, leopard uh, sketch that you did last year. Laid a big bomb. Oh, buddy, it didn't lay such a big bomb. Oh, no? That week, Russia went to the U.N. and complained we were doing underground testing. <laughs> All right, all right, that's all. This week, folks, we are going to do a husband and wife sketch. All right, Mr. Professor, what makes a husband and wife sketch so good? If you will sit down, Maurice, I will tell you why. As I explained in an article I wrote for the television quarterly last period, this type of comedy automatically creates an empathy, a rapport, if you will, thereby setting up a common denominator with the mass audience. Now, this is our raison d'etre. The husband and wife image is possibly the easiest identifiable one in our society. Ergo, the mass psyche finds a release from its hidden latent hostilities by this kind of vicarious means. Erica's veins, latex, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, are you trying to cover up because you can't think of anything with a lot of those $9 college words? For your information, those $9 college words are in the dictionary and they happen to be used by a lot of thinking people for intercommunication. What does that prove about anything? We're not university professors. Fellas, hold Buddy, on, you're being very disruptive. Oh, yeah? Me. Well, you're being very distracting. I am distracting? Yeah, you and that hokey jacket Look you're wearing. Look who's making fun of comedy don't sports. Don't get me cut it out of my clothes. Fellas, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Miss Gilman is leaving. If you'll forgive me, I think that I've got all the material I need now. Well, Thank well, you. Well, 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 Oh, Marge, would you get me the New York State Unemployment Office, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, I apologize. Gee, I acted just like the kind of guy I hate. I did it, too. I don't know what got into me. I heard myself saying things I couldn't believe they were coming out of my mouth. Well, I wasn't as bad as you two guys, but I'd pay money to take back everything I said. You know, Rob, your instincts were right. We should have never let her in the room with us. That's right. We should have listened to you. I okay the whole thing. It's my fault as much as anybody else's. Is there anything we can do to stop the article? 
With Manhattan Magazine, they attack giants of industry. They won't stop with us. There must be something we can do. Well, look, I say we go to Lorraine with honor and dignity, and we say, Miss Gilman, we acted like fools. And we'd like to know just how much it would cost to buy you off. <laughs> hey, if that don't work, we can throw ourselves at her feet and start sobbing. Very funny. You're making jokes, and we're in a big mess. Rob, talk about a big mess. <laughs> Daddy of them all. I hate you. Rob, can I bring in Ed Palmer now? Who? Ed Palmer, the, the gentleman I spoke to you about. What gentleman? The reporter from Manhattan Magazine. The reporter? Well, yes, you remember I told you you wanted to come in and spend a couple of days while you worked? Well, who, who, who was yeah, the... Uh... Who uh, was the girl? What girl? Lorraine Gilman. Oh, gosh, you mean the decorator. Did you say decorator? We, yes. We were thinking of having your offices changed while you were on your vacation. <laughs> decorator? Lorraine You're Gilman not putting is a on? decorator. You mean she's not the reporter? Well, you mean you thought we've got a oh, reprieve? Oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. If you can control your hysteria, I'd like to bring in Ed Palmer. <laughs> Over my dead body. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're joking. No. We've all agreed that we'd rather be good friends than have a reporter here watching us work. Oh, come on now. You can't get in any trouble. <laughs> oh, 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 any trouble. I'm Rob. sorry. I'm sorry to bother you, but I think I left my glove. Rob, oh. the magazine is very important. Wait, Mr. Uh, Palmer Ms. is waiting. Wait a minute, just a minute. Uh, Miss Gilman, uh, would you answer a question for us? Certainly. Uh, you uh, sat here and watched us work, didn't you? Uh, yes. Well, we're conducting a little experiment in uh, human behavior. Would you give Mr. Cooley your impression of us? Oh, well, I, I'd rather not say. Oh, but oh, we're all oh, friends. Please, Please do. Do. Yeah, all right. Just tell them. For one thing, watching you made my job as a decorator rather easy. Oh, really? How? Well, I decided the perfect motif for this room would be a Roman forum. A Roman forum? Well, with all the knifing and backstabbing that went on, I thought I was watching a new version of Julius Caesar. <laughs> Bye. Thanks Bye. a lot, Miss Gilman. <laughs> I told you, Mel. Well, well, you can learn from it. You can uh, learn from it and avoid the pitfalls. After all, you're all adult, intelligent. I'll cancel the interview. Honey. Hi. 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 Mm. You seem happy. Yeah, did you see it? See what? Then you didn't see it. Come here. What? The American Decorator Magazine has an article on Sally and Buddy and me. Oh, really? Yeah, and we all, all this publicity to you. To me? Yeah, if it hadn't been for you, we'd have never gotten this article. Oh, well, who wrote it? Uh, Lorraine Gilman. Oh, well, let me see it. No, no, you sit down. I'm going to read it to you. You ready? Uh-huh. Recently, I had the unusual assignment of redecorating the office used by the writers of The Alan Brady Show and discovered that it requires three creative intellects and one full week to manufacture the show. That this miracle is wrought in one week is an enigma since their writing sessions are characterized by childish outbursts of petulance, pyrotechnical displays of pseudo-psychoanalytical jargon, posturing, <laughs> quibbling, and backstabbing, giving the appearance not at all of a writing session, but rather playtime at an excessively progressive day nursery. <laughs> It was this childish behavior of the writers that gave me a clue to the type of decor I might try, with touches of a Roman forum in the wallpaper and the furniture. Well, that is just terrible. What's terrible? That lamp, Rob. We have the same lamp, and we paid $15 for it. You know what is even worse than that? What? A husband giving his wife a shot with a rolled-up magazine. No, that's not in the head. Not in the head. Thank you. I know you're